what's going on good people welcome back to another episode of the trading challenge today is day number 10 april 21st 2023 we made some trades today so let's get into it okay so coming into today's session my goal has been the same that has been all week except i added a little bit more to it to make it a little bit more specific so today my goal is not only to trade the setups that i know but to also trade those setups properly that's where i went wrong yesterday so i wanted to come back and correct that today so let's start our analysis at 9 30 when the market opened so when we opened we opened up here at around 33,990. but as you can see we had a sharp sell-off past yesterday's closing price that's what this orange line right here represents yesterday's close and that price is 33,919. shot all the way down to that level pulled back shot right back down through it once again but then the selling was pretty much over from that point and once the selling was over we pushed back up we retested this previous swing high which makes sense that's what the market should do and then we pushed down and we created this higher low now you guys know that this is one of my favorite setups i call it a downtrend reversal higher low established and it usually leads to an uptrend for a good amount of time and sometimes for the rest of the session so once I saw that, that's when I started thinking about and considering the long trade. So once prices stayed above that higher low close closing candle, that's where I went long at trade one. So went long after seeing a higher low established after a sharp reversal of a downtrend and my break even stop got hit. So prices eventually moved in my favor, which allowed me to move prices to my break even. But once they came back, I just let it go. I didn't I didn't uh, try and follow up on it. I didn't try and double dip because one of my biggest rules is when you have a break even stop that gets hit you have to respect it because if the market came all the way back down to my break even stop that's the market trying to tell me something so i need to reevaluate the situation and see exactly what's going on before i hop back into the market so that was my mentality right here on trade one and then as you see prices continue back up past yesterday's closing price we pushed all the way up to what used to be support over here from the pre-market and then we pull back now that led me to my entry at trade two which was i went long after a higher low was established during the uptrend and it also was the bottom of the bull channel so i don't have that line drawn on here right now but if you were able to start at this bottom right here take a trend line connect it to the bottom of this higher low right here and extend it it would extend all the way up to where my entry was at trade number two so that was a great entry for me textbook i followed the trend it's a higher high or excuse me it's a higher high higher low type of trend you want to get in at lower prices so that was good but because the volatility was so high my break even stop eventually ended up coming back to get hit and remember my rule once the break even stop gets hit, I'm not hopping back in for the same trade. Even though on this occasion it did work, I know that more times than not, that rule will protect me more than it would put extra pocket, uh, extra profits in my pocket. So I'm glad I was able to be disciplined right there and stick to my rule. So after trade two, we see prices push up, create this swing high, and then they pull all the way back to yesterday's closing price. They tried to retest that higher low touch, but they weren't able to do it which in essence really created another higher low. If you compare them, we start here and we have this higher low, this one, the next one is higher than the first one. The third one is higher than the second one. So the market is showing you bullish signs right here. And then once we pull back, got back above yesterday's closing price, this is where a little bit of confusion set in for me because initially I'm seeing my downtrend reversal, higher low established, which I know leads to an uptrend most of the time. But I'm also seeing this swing high, these areas right here, which created another lower high. So I'm like, which one is going to prevail? Will it be the uptrending pattern that's already been formed? Or will it be the downtrending pattern that's most recently been formed? So I went long at three because my analysis and my thought process was if it retested the higher low all of these times that's probably the signal that the market is telling me that it wants to go up 
because I was actually what's interesting is that I was actually studying this last night. So let's pull that up real quick so I can show you exactly what I saw and how that led to my thought process for that trade. Let's go to the long term last night. Okay, so this is a higher low reversal that happened yesterday right at the closing time for the market. So it happened from 3.30 until 4 o'clock. So we had a downturn that started around 2.30. Pushed all the way down, created a higher low. We pushed away from that, came back to retest it the first time, pushed away, came back to retest it a second time, and then that's when the uptrend for the rest of the day actually happened. So it's crazy how... I studied that last night and then I saw the exact same thing today. You know, that's I guess that's a good reason to study when the market is closed. You never know what you can learn. So that was my thought process going into trade three. I'm thinking, well, if it's retested that higher low all these times, it has to go up. But the important takeaway from this trade at trade three is that you always want to follow the most recent price action. So it might have been a bull trend earlier, but if you're seeing lower lows and lower highs right now in the moment, well, you, you either have to go short or if you want to go long, you just have to wait until you see a stronger confirmation signal. But three was also one of my favorite patterns that I like to trade, which I call a post pattern. So if we read the trade notes. It says I went long after seeing a pattern that I know PP that represents post pattern. So whenever you see that on my notes, that's what that means. And then I exit it once the next candle closed red. So let's get into that pattern that I'm talking about right there, the post pattern. So a post pattern is a continuation pattern where you have a strong spike to the upside or the downside, and then you have prices continue and follow through for the next maybe three, four, or five candles. So this right here is an example where you have a tall initial body to the upside, and then you want the next candle to be a very smaller body, but you want it to be on top of the candle from previous. So this tall body candle is the start. Then you want to see a small body candle that's also green. And then you go long at the close of that candle and you exit when you hit your profit target or you exit whenever a candle turns red. You exit immediately. So those are the rules. And we can see that this pattern happens very often in the market. Tall body, smaller body, continuation tall body smaller body continuation tall body small body continuation tall body small body continuation so that's what i look for on trade number three but i think the reason that it didn't work was because the overall trend was down at that time so you can't really go for your bullish continuation patterns when the overall trend is down because at the time, I didn't realize that we had made three lower highs. I saw this one, and then I saw that one. But I didn't realize until after the session that you really have to go back and start your lower high count from this top. So if we start from here, the next lower high is right here. So that's the second one. And then where I went long on trade three, that's actually the third lower high. So if it's three lower highs, you definitely can't go long. And... I learned that right there, but I followed the rules of my post pattern continuation, which is the next candle is red. You close immediately. So that's what I did right there. I'm glad I was able to take a small loss instead of taking the standard loss that I would have took if I kept my stop loss where it initially should have been, which was not too far below yesterday's closing price. So right down here in this area. So it would have definitely got hit. So once prices push back down there, they created I wouldn't say a higher low, but I would say a, a recess, another recess of that previous higher low. So I'm thinking that, man, it, I really want to go long and trade with the uptrend because of what I'm seeing. But I still can't fight the channel that I have drawn on the chart. So when prices push back up to this wick right here, they didn't need to necessarily touch the top of the channel completely. Close enough is good enough for me. So once I saw them touch it again on this next candle at trade four, and then they started moving away, as soon as I saw prices start moving away from that level, I entered short. So trade number four, trade notes, it says, I went short after a lower high was established at the top of a bear channel, and I exited at the prior support level below. 
So I went short at the top of the channel and just simply held it back down to the clear level of support that was established by the higher low from earlier. So that's a textbook trade for me. Great entry, great exit, great trade management. That's what I'm trying to do on most of my trades. So really good job right there for me. So after the selling was over, look at what happened again. We created a higher low. So that right there is another downtrend reversal, higher low established that leads to an uptrend for a considerable amount of time. Now, I was waiting for the recess of this higher low so I could hop in for the long trade again. But on some occasions, the downtrend reverse the higher low established, it'll just move away from that higher low and never come back. And you might establish the next higher low way higher. So technically speaking, we didn't get the first higher low in this pattern until we got up to this previous level of support. So that tells you that the higher low reversal is very strong. So my analysis right here was once we broke the support level, I was considering a long trade, but it just moved quickly without me. But I think the good lesson that I learned in this scenario was that I didn't chase it. I could have chased the market up, but I said if we've already had a one, two, three, four, five, six, a six candle spike to the upside, me chasing the trend after it's on its eighth candle to the upside. It's not that I can't be profitable, but the chances are against me because more than likely it'll pull back and then continue. And usually when I go long at higher prices, it pulls back to my stop and then continues. So I'm glad I passed on the, the long entry right there. But that led me to trade five. So once we had that higher low and we spiked all the way back up, we came back up to what used to be a previous level of resistance from earlier in the session. And then we pulled back and established the zone. So trade five was actually similar to the setup that I saw at trade three. It's the exact same pattern, the post pattern, where we have a tall body candle and then a small body that closes on top of it, green next to it. You go long at the close of that candle. So that's where I went long on trade five. Now, eventually it came back up to the top of that structure that was created from earlier. But. One of my biggest problems this week was that I've been stubborn and I haven't taken profits when they reached a clear level because I'm being greedy and trying to hold it for a bigger trade. That's exactly what happened right here at trade five. Also, prices came back up to the top of the consolidation and I said, mm, I could take it. But I think it's going all the way back up. Of course, it didn't. Consolidation is a consolidation for a reason and it's going to consolidate until it breaks out. So trade five, I actually ended up taking a break even loss. So didn't lose anything, didn't make anything. But I feel as though I still count that as a loss because I had profit that I should have taken. And then I let it all come back and let it get erased. So to me, I look at that as a loss. So that's something I definitely got to work on. Definitely, definitely. But after trade five, we bounced on the bottom of the zone one more time. And that's when I drew this trend line from support level that we established from the higher low from earlier you connect that to the bottom of the consolidation zone where price is touched and then you extend that up for the rest of the session and we can see that it actually held up one more time now i was hesitant to take that trade because if you look at this annotation that i have up here it says ugly pullbacks and a strong trend are very tricky because in my experience i've learned that when you have an ugly pullback if the trend is strong enough you just have to take it because you have to ask yourself if the trend is super strong and the pullback is ugly are people just going to start shorting it against all of this bullish price action from before or are they going to go long in the expectation of one more leg to the upside but i'm always confused in the ugly pullback because i'm like oh we have a tweezer top right here why would i go long so i, I eventually I had to use every ounce of discipline in me to not go long up here, even though I saw that it was working. So once this consolidation channel got established, I think it was after this touch and this touch. So that's when I drew it right here at around 1020 after this touch of the bull trend line. So once the zone was drawn, all I had to do was go long at the bottom and then take it back up to the top which is exactly what I was able to do at trade six. So trade six says went long at the bottom of a range that was established in the uptrend. That's another thing. 
when you have a consolidation range for me i like to trade in a direction that was established before the consolidation so if prices were heading on if prices were heading to the upside before the zone was established i only want to trade the zone from the long side so that's what i was able to do right here i exited at the top of the range and that's a good trade for me but then look at 6a 6a was very interesting and i think 6a even though it wasn't a trade was probably the best decision i made throughout the entire session because at 6a read these trade notes down here it says i strongly considered the long from the bottom of the zone at 6a because my rationale at that point in time was if the market has been doing something for a while the tendency for the market to continue doing that is higher than for the market to do something else so i'm like okay if trade six worked and then it came right back down to the zone again i should go long right i don't know it's just something in me that said don't do it i don't know if it was the fact that i was already late in the consolidation because the consolidation was really established at the top of this channel right here at 1020 so we had one touch and then two more touches and then at that second touch that's where i got in so i don't know if i really want to take the third opportunity after i already had a trade that was positive and that worked for me so i decided to just pass on that trade because i've learned over time that you don't want to double dip once you already had a trade that was positive take your i mean take your profit and then wait for the next best opportunity so 6a was a a, a big turning point for me and i'm very proud of myself for having enough discipline to stick to my rules so that was my last trade for the day i think overall today's session was pretty good for me man i i focused on being disciplined and it was a lot of opportunities for me to break my discipline but i said look i know what i'm here for i'm here to trade the setups that i know and i'm here to trade the setups that i know the proper way i think i did a pretty good job a uh, pretty good job of that today i'm happy that i was able to finish the week strong it's a good friday now i have a a lot of things to work on going into the weekend so i'm gonna do a lot of back testing focus on being disciplined and only trading the setups that i know and only trading those setups in the proper way in the proper fashion so i appreciate you guys for tuning in with me i'll see you again on monday for day number 11 i think that'll be what is it, 22nd, 23rd, the 24th right so i'll see you guys 9 30 a.m sharp and until then take it easy